night, everybody, because it is Tuesday. That means it's time for Hoffa Health, where our friends at FHP Health Center are bringing you the very best information that you can use today. This isn't like, okay, 20-year plan and everything like that. We bring on learned experts to let you know what you can do to live a happy and healthy island lifestyle. And it's not, you know, like splitting the atom and everything like that. Simple steps, simple strategies, very, very effective right off the bat. And we welcome to the Zoom room for the first time, hopefully not the last time, because uh, <laughs> Jonay Delgado is going to talk about a very important topic about eating during the holidays. Okay, every, everybody's ears just perked up and they heard eating. Okay, so Jonay, welcome to the show, first of all. We're very happy to have you. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Okay, and you are a registered dietitian, so I'm sure you've got your work cut out for you here on Guam because, of <laughs> course, you know, food isn't just sustenance and nourishment for us. Um, it's a form of currency. Food on Guam was our first social media way back. <laughs> For sure. And food is love here on Guam. The hospitality, that's how we show our hospitality and love is through food. Exactly. And and you're a girl whose family originates from Agani Heights. And so, like, you know, I'm, I'm from there, too. And, you know, okay. real small village and everything. Everybody knows each <laughs> other. We, we gather, you know, we bring food to each other's tables and everything. And that's such a wonderful way to uh, to live your life. But also it's got consequences. Yes, it definitely does. If there's no portion or mindset, mindful eating going into it, for sure it does. Mm -hmm. So as a professional dietitian and everything like that, this type of year, I would assume for for people in your line of work are it's particularly dicey because, you know, um, it's a time of, you know, a family gathering again of mm -hmm. probably, you know, people would say, oh, it's a time of great festivities and <laughs> celebrating. I'd like to say gluttony. <laughs> yeah. So what what do you what are some general tips that you can um, maybe give to people based on what they traditionally do during the holidays as far as eating? Yeah, for sure. During this time, especially starting from November, right? It goes Thanksgiving, then Christmas, then New Year's. People have this like, afraid, they're afraid to eat or they see food as like guilt or they have some shame because they know they're going to overeat or possibly overeat. Mm -hmm. um, they always think of these two options that they have to restrict or indulge. But the bottom line is that you can do both. And as a dietitian, we try to find that balance and encourage that balance to make sure you guys have a positive relationship with food. And so during this time of year, some tips I do have is you know, we have a lot of parties coming up, not just one or two on a specific day, but go into a party with a positive mindset. Don't set any foods off limits because studies have definitely shown that if you do that, what happens is you find that food more appealing. And so what happens after that, you do overeat and what we don't want you to feel groggy or full at the end of the day. So go into it with a positive mindset, but also practice that mindful eating. And I don't know if people are aware of what that means, but just be more aware of what foods you will be eating, what you are eating at the time, um, kind of follow my plate recommendations. Dietitians say this all the time, right? Use a plate, half of it should be vegetables or fruit, one fourth of it grain, the other portion protein. But the main goal is to add that lean protein, high carbohydrates that are full with fiber to keep you more satiated. Mm -hmm. um, another trick I do have during the holidays is this 80-20 rule. So it's still like that balance I talked about. 80% should be focusing on the nutrient dense foods. So the good carbs, good protein, good vegetables, fruit and grains and dairy. And of course the lower fat if possible. I know the good foods have the, the very high fat but the 20% still indulge in some of the foods that only come once a year, right? So like vanilla sagu, you know, we don't get that pretty throughout the year. We usually get it at Christmas time. I was so going to ask that, you about that. Th yeah. This is also a time of the year when, when people consciously only eat certain things during huh. during these last two months of the year. And then they actually mm -hmm. don't, they avoid it at the end of the year because it, it it's got more sentimental yeah. value. Yeah, and then you get more frustrated or you feel like regret, oh man, I should not, I should have ate that one. I had the time to. So have like a balanced, good mindset. So 80% make sure you're eating those nutritious foods. Therefore, 20% of the time you can still indulge in the foods that only come around during the year. Mm -hmm. um, but another thing, just not just being mindful with what you're eating, but being mindful of what you're drinking. So at this mm. time, sweets and sugar beverages, so like the hot cocoa, eggnog, even alcoholic beverages, um, make sure you are hydrating with water prior to drinking alcoholic beverages, drinking in between alcoholic beverages, spreading them out, 
Um, but those sugar sweetened beverages have many calories, have a lot of calories. And if you were to compare, let's say three pastries to an alcoholic drink, they actually can equal the same calories. So wow. just be more mindful when it comes to that. And then also be more aware of your hunger cues. You know, it's very easy for us to kind of go for seconds because, oh, we are very excited with the food that's on the table. So ask yourself after your first plate, ask yourself, am I hungry? Am I thirsty? Do I need to go back? Should I take a break? Um, kind of teach yourself how to portion and, con and have that self-control during the holidays. Mm -hmm. I know it's easier said than done, but if you practice that throughout the whole year, it becomes more easier. Now, even though you are an expert, you know, and you, you've gone to school for a very long time to learn about, you know, the digestive <laughs> system and the way that, you know, that food is processed and used throughout the body, like I'm sure you would agree that a lot of people, especially here in the island, we don't eat with our stomachs. We eat with our eyes. And you walk, you, yeah. you walk to like a, a Chamorro um, or Filipino, uh, uh, you know, table, your fiesta table, and it's a mile mm. and a half long, and it's got everything under yeah. the sun you would want to eat. How do you actually condition yourself to say everything looks so good? But I, I know Janae was telling me you know, like I got to use the eighty twenty rule and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But it's 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 a, it's almost like that song, you know, like my stomach's telling me no, but my eyes keep saying yes. <laughs> Right. And it's very common, right? You're only human. You're probably going to look with your eyes. And so a lot of tips for not overeating during this time of year is, um, again, staying mindful, but never go to a party hungry. And, you know, some people are like, oh, I'm not going to eat throughout the day because I'm so excited about what's good the, during the party. I want to make sure I have enough room. Have a small snack with high fiber. Therefore, when you go to a party, your portions are smaller. Mm. Uh, stay hydrated as much as possible throughout the day. You don't want to have those headaches from dehydration. So you're but actually then, almost talking about pre-partying. You're, you're conditioning pre you're conditioning your yeah. system to actually not, you know, not be so, oh, that's yeah. interesting. I've never heard that approach before. Pre-party and then during the party. So this is to answer your question is, you know, when the table is opening up, right, we're, we're taking off the foils, off all of those dishes make sure you kind of look at that table before you fill up your plate. This will kind of help you track your balance on your portions. And again, that whole my plate 80-20 rule. Um, but the my plate, we kind of use our hands too. Grain should be the size of our fist, protein the size of our palm. Doesn't mean pile it up on the plate, right? But just focus on those portion sizes. Um, but look at that table before you, you kind of fill it up. Look for those vegetables, pile the vegetables first, then the protein still have those carbohydrates, knowing that carbs are more of an empty calorie if you're looking at white rice, right, compared to like a leaner protein um, or, red, or roasted vegetables. Um, but then also take a step away from the table when you do finish your, your first meal, spend, a time, spend time with your family and friends, because not only is this time for eating, but also for enjoying the quality time with your the loved ones and then kind of take some time for the food to digest so you are not um, increasing the risk of overeating. Okay, would you maybe recommend that as, as someone who maybe uh, host parties, like if I was hosting a Christmas party at my house and everything, I might not wanna actually like leave all of the entrees out, therefore producing oh, yeah. more temptation. Maybe I'll, I'll say, okay, everybody eat and after an hour, I'll wrap up all the food and that's when I break out the karaoke machine and it's like, all right, let's <laughs> do something else. Yeah, no, for sure. And that's a good tip too, is kind of setting or bringing out smaller, more smaller meals first, and then later on bringing more stuff out for people to enjoy. Because we know we're going to get seconds, there's always that chance. And so kind of bringing out, let's say you bring out the vegetables first, and then later down the road, bring out the other dishes. Okay. Well, well, Jone, I mean, th these are wonderful tactical approaches uh, to eating better, to eating less, and, and to be able to uh, control what you do but you know there's a lot of people out there who say you know i've got a game plan already mm -hmm. i'm gonna go you know completely nuts during the holidays and everything like that and once january 1st hits i'm gonna work <laughs> i'm gonna work out like a demon i'm going to you know be completely diligent to my my dietary plan and everything like that so what would you recommend for people that are just like okay they're that's their strategy and they say after new year's and everything like that then they want to get back on the, yeah. on the right path and that's completely fine, right? It's um, it's very normal, very common. But I always try to tell people because usually people don't want to see me during this time. They'll come during January first and be like, "You're the Debbie the Downer holiday. during the holidays." Right? <laughs> <laughs> but then there are some people that come to me just to keep them accountable. But usually, people, you know, the January first comes around and they're like resolutions here and there. Mm -hmm. um, but to first start off, 
just lose the guilt. Even though you know you overate during the holidays, this is your time to get back on track. And this is also a time you have a whole year to kind of practice the healthier lifestyle changes that you can do. Um, so yeah, don't feel guilty. Enjoy your food. Just be more mindful as much as possible. And then starting January 1st, this is where you can find that balance. It's important to make those smart those smart goals. Smart actually means small, measurable, um, reasonable, attainable, and timely. And so this can just be, okay, I'm going to cut out soda every dinner. Very, very small, timely. Cut out soda every dinner for the next month or so. And as you will see, it's like when people start to achieve this goal, they start to make more, they get excited, they see the results in their lab work, they see the results in their body. Um, it gets them very excited for them to kind of make more goals. Um, but this is where the planning really comes on and you'll see a lot of meal planning with family um, and also more people going out, hopefully more people exercising more. Okay. Well, of, of course, you know this, um, but this time of year is typically um, the way food is prepared also can be uh, can be very, very rich. And, you know, like some, right. some people like, you know, when they have uh, the prime rib, they like that little bit of fat on the on the side. They like, you know people like you know milk and that or you know they like the cheesecake with the extra cherries on top and everything <laughs> when, it, when it comes to food preparation um yeah. what are some uh you know some tips that you can provide the community about you know making sure that even when we when we put the food out um and serve it to our guests and, and to ourselves and everything like that that we're actually eating food that is responsibly prepared yeah so are you talking about like food safety sure yeah yeah, so for food safety, just, I mean, here on Guam, right, sometimes we just leave the foods out for more than three or four hours, but the recommendation is to not leave it out anymore. Um, but when it comes to eating healthier foods during the holiday, like I said, one tip we can do is bring our own dish that is in the healthier way. So for example, Thanksgiving, I prepared like sweet potato brownies and no one actually knew it was kind of like a test for my family to see if they can they can kind of tell if it was a healthier option can you please and, share the recipe with us for yeah. that sweet potato brownie sounds fantastic sweet potato brownies higher in fiber therefore one piece actually fills up a lot of people because usually with the regular brownies it's um just flour and they they start to eat more of it because of the lack in fiber yeah um, another one for thanksgiving was a crustless pumpkin pie and by doing that you still have that taste you still enjoy it it's lower in calories but still higher in fiber very cool yeah okay so uh, any uh, any other tips that you might want to give people or maybe you know for some people like it's uh, you know, we talked about the eyes we talked about the stomach and everything like that for some people it's like even like a mental block or, you know, like, a, you know, we, we believe so much here on Guam about community and some people mm -hmm. go to, you know, the, uh, uh, the food line and the party and they deliberately overstack their plate because they don't want to insult, you know, the host of the party and they, they, yeah. they don't want to make it seem like, Oh, you only got a couple pieces of chicken. You know, was my food not good enough for you? You know how that is, yeah. you know, the, the guilt trip kicks oh. in from the other side. <laughs> then definitely. Yeah. And you can politely say no, right. But it's easier said than done. Um, but like I said, I, the main goal is to enjoy the food you are eating during this holiday. Just be more mindful. And if you do overeat, you can come set an appointment with me and I can help keep you accountable during the year to put you back on your goals. We'll actually come up with an individualized plan because health is not just nutrition, right? It also includes like um, exercise, stress management and improving your sleep. So I can help you kind of come up with an individualized plan that works for you. But definitely, if people are saying, how come you're only eating this little, just, you know, come up with a game plan and be like, oh, I have another party I have to go to. I just want to make sure I enjoy the foods here and then make sure I enjoy the food somewhere else. Mm -hmm. um, leave some room. You don't have to tell them, oh, I'm on a diet because then people think of that as a negative thing. But yeah. just just kind of politely say no and kind of come up with a plan that works best for you. And, you know, I really appreciate, Janae, how you, you when you were sharing your own recipes, how you know, you were saying they were both desserts, you know, you made sweet potato mm -hmm. brownies and you made crustless pumpkin pie. Like some people would say, okay, I'm going to prepare the fried chicken in a different way. Or, you know, like right. I, I may not, I may use a certain uh, different oil that's healthier when I put like the fried stuff together and everything like that. But you actually went straight for the desserts. Yeah. Made that, made that a healthier part, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. There's still a balance when it comes to nutrition. Um, never restrict yourself of one specific food. You can make, I always tell patients, right? Any healthy food can actually be unhealthy. It depends on the cooking method you actually do or the ingredients that you have. 
So experiment, like for example, stay away from the frying, but do like grilling, braising, or steaming. That still can make it a little bit more healthier. Cut down on the salted butter, change it to unsalted butter, kind of look for olive oil and not like vegetable oil. You can change it up to make it healthier, but still enjoyable and still actually very tasty. Okay. Now this seems like a lot of information and a lot of work people out there, but people like Joni make it really, really easy. Simple decisions, small steps and everything like that can go a really, really long way. And your body is going to really thank you for it. Oh, for sure. You will actually be surprised just by making those small goals and small changes. It will definitely benefit you, not just with overall health, but mental health too. Okay. Well, uh, Janine, that's our time, but I'd like to give you the last word to just, you know, say anything that people might want to know about when they head to the, uh, to <laughs> that, that fantastic place called the party table in about two weeks. Well, yeah. Please, please enjoy all the food. Have the good quality time with friends and family. Um, get rid of the guilt, get rid of the shame. You know, we are only human. Just be, try to go for those vegetables, those proteins, fruits, uh, fruits and vegetables, proteins and grains. Um, try to hydrate and also kind of have a game plan. Therefore, you won't feel over, uh, what do you call it? Like groggy or full. And therefore, you can have better quality time. with. Okay. Oh, sorry. L uh, last question. I just thought about this. Uh, does the time of day when you eat, does that have any significant impact on uh, on your body? Because I, I know there's this myth that they said if you eat later at night, you get really you can have nightmares and everything like that. But if you plan, mm -hmm. you know, your family party maybe later on at night, because I know some people do it like you know, eight nine at night. If you eat mm -hmm. later on in in during the day and everything like that, could that have a more substantial effect on your on your body? Um, it could be there. It, the best answer to a lot of nutrition questions is it depends. So it depends on what food you eat. For example, if you eat a heavy fat meal, what might happen? Acid reflux, you might feel like that heartburn, therefore mm -hmm. keep a lot of people up. Um, a lot of sugar, it doesn't just affect kids, it also affects a lot of adults too. So it depends. Always try, I would encourage to try to eat before that 8, 9 o'clock, just so it can kind of digest so you have a better sleep and therefore you can wake up feeling more refreshed. Make sure you hydrate during the night. Hydration is key. Beyond Absolutely. Hydration okay. Is key. So we're going to go grab a couple of glasses of water right now and take the uh, knowledge that you have now given us as a holiday gift and everything like that and make sure that we, we practice what we preach this uh, Christmas and New Year's and everything. So, Janae, thank you so much. Happy holidays to you and your team thank at FHP. You. We happy really appreciate holidays. it. Yes, happy holidays. Yeah, and we want to have you back on the show and everything because this has been fantastic. Thank you. And I will definitely share those recipes with you guys and you can share it around. Yes. Please. Okay. Yes. As soon I was absolutely in when you said sweet potato brownies, I was, I was like, okay, sign me up. Take my money, please. <laughs> sounds weird, <laughs> but I promise it's tasty. Okay. okay. So it sounds beautiful, actually. So thank you very much. Happy holidays. Thank we'll you, you so much. Thank you. All right. Please stay tuned, everybody, because the link continues right after this. We all know that a healthy lifestyle is important to prevent chronic diseases and long-term illnesses and boost mental health. It's difficult to determine exactly which healthy habits are worth investing in to live longer and healthier lives. But FHP is here to help. Tune into the link every Tuesday for FHP Hoffa Health Tips, brought to you by Take Care. Helpful advice about healthy lifestyle choices that will have a big difference in your health from the medical experts at FHP Clinic. FHP Hoffa Health Tips on the link every Tuesday is brought to you by Take Care.